Okay, so our final speaker for the morning session will be Alex Fonseca from Qatar Computing Research Institute, who will take us from graph processing to graph mining. This may address the question from the first questioner in the last talk uh, from, from Microsoft. Okay, hello everyone. So I'm Alexander Fonseca, and uh, I'm going to be talking about Arabesque, a system that we designed for distributed graph mining. And this is work that I did with my team at the Qatar Computing Research Institute, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. So I'll start by mentioning what was already mentioned in the previous presentation, which is that we can find graphs everywhere in our lives, from social networks to transportation systems, even in chemistry. Now, the important thing is that each one of these graphs encodes within themselves a vast amount of uh, useful information that is ready to be extracted. Now, in the previous presentation, um, it was mentioned, um, the previous presentation was focused on graph analytics. But another way of extracting this information is mining the graph. So graph mining algorithms focus on finding subgraphs of interest in a certain input graph. For example, if we consider click finding, and if we give it this sample uh, input graph, this click finding algorithm would return as output um, a set of subgraphs of si uh, with three or more vertices that are completely connected, as highlighted in colors here. Now, other examples of graph mining algorithms include frequent subgraph mining, motif counting, or pattern matching, such as is done in Neo4j. Now, these mining algorithms have a myriad of useful real-world applications. In, partic in particular, in the web, you might use graph mining to do community detection, or in biology, graph mining is used to characterize gene and protein interactions. Now, the real challenge with graph mining has to do with the fact that there is an exponential number of subgraphs. So we can see here in this example that, that even with a graph with just 4,000 vertices, so 4,000 subgraphs of size 1, by the time we are looking at subgraphs of size 6, we are already talking about 1.7 billion of these subgraphs. And we can see that this growth is exponential. So handling this is complex and expensive. So if you want to design your own graph mining algorithms nowadays, uh, a typical approach is to get a PhD student, lock him on a cage, <laughs> on a cage, no, on a room, and have him work for several hours and several days um, in doing a, a, a graph mining implementation from scratch. Now, assuming he does a good work, he will probably get pretty close to uh, optimal performance. But the problem is that it, it will take him several months to code everything from scratch without relying on any abstractions. And he will have to deal with all the complexity of graph mining and not only that, but also the complexity involved in distributing and scaling the computation. So in the end, this requires a great deal of time and also domain expertise. So then you might think that you can take advantage of current graph processing systems, like Giraffe, GraphLab, or GraphX. These systems, indeed, transparently give you uh, the distribution that you're looking for. And they also give you a set of abstractions that correspond to the think like a vertex model. While these abstractions are really useful for implementing graph processing algorithms such as uh, page rank or label propagation, they are not, however, suitable for graph mining algorithms. And this is because having to deal with subgraphs at the, at the granularity of vertices leads to a lot of data redundancy and computational overhead. And not only that, but these abstractions fail to hide from the user the complexities of handling this exponential growth. So in the end, using the systems does not lead to uh, an implementation that is easier to code. And um, worse, it also results in implementations that are poorly performant and poorly scalable. So our objective with Arabesque was to develop a new system and execution model that was designed from scratch for graph mining algorithms. And um, what we want to do with Arabesque is do for graph mining what Pregel did for graph analytics. 
And we achieved this by providing the user with a simple and generic API, specially designed for these algorithms, and a highly efficient and distributable execution engine. So in the end, our objective is to make it easy for you to develop your own highly efficient graph, uh, distributed graph mining algorithms. So I've mentioned that one of the key contributions of Arabesque is precisely this API, these abstractions, that uh, handle all the common cases in graph mining algorithms. And we can see in this example how straightforward it is to implement click finding using these abstractions in Arabesque. So using our think like an embedding or think like a subgraph approach, the user simply has to state in which subgraphs he is interested in. In this case, the user is interested in all subgraphs that return true when, when applied to the isClick function. Now, for each one of these subgraphs, we want, well, the user also has to specify what he wants to do with them. In this case, we simply output this subgraph to disk to check it later. And so you can see that in just 11 lines of code, and I'm even counting the white spaces in the middle, we have a very efficient and, and distributable uh, implementation of click finding. For comparison, MACE, a state-of-the-art implementation, requires more than 4,000 lines of code to achieve the same thing and to do it in a centralized manner. Similarly, for another algorithm, motive counting, where we are interested in counting the number of subgraphs that share the same structure, we can again achieve a very efficient and distributed implementation with just 11 lines of code, whereas another state-of-the-art implementation, GDRI scanner, requires more than 3,000 lines of code to achieve the same thing, and again, in a centralized manner, so with no distribution. Now, Arabesque gives you the tools to easily implement your own graph mining algorithms. But the cool thing is that it does so without having to sacrifice performance. In fact, we've consi consistently seen that single-threaded executions of Arabesque have performance comparable to those of centralized state-of-the-art implementations. But because Arabesque is able to transparently scale your executions to thousands of workers, we can effectively take uh, executions that would require several days several hours or even days, and have them run in Arabesque in just a few minutes. And because of this, handling big graphs, which would take probably uh, several months on centralized implementations, we can process them a lot more efficiently. And of course, we were only able to achieve this due to a series of optimizations that we introduced in the system. These optimizations have to do with avoiding redundant work, compressing subgraphs, or doing efficient aggregation. Now, due to time limitations, I'll be focusing mostly on the first two optimizations, but I invite you to check our paper for more details on the third one. So, now I've given you a brief introduction into what Arabesque is and how it works at a high level. But now let's look at some more details. So, I've mentioned in the beginning that graph mining algorithms work by finding subgraphs of interest to the user. But how exactly do these algorithms explore this subgraph space? Now, there are several ways to think about this, but perhaps the simplest one is to consider that this exploration is done through iterative expansion. And what I mean by iterative expansion is that if you start with um, a subgraphs of size n, you can arrive at subgraphs of size n plus one by joining one vertex at a time. So let's look at an, ex uh, at an example input graph where I've given numerical IDs to the, uh, to the vertices of this graph. So if we look at these, uh, at these vertices, these vertices are the subgraphs of size one. If we then want to arrive at subgraphs of size two, we simply have to take each one of these vertices and connect, connect them to all their neighbors one at a time. And each one of these connections will generate a subgraph of size two which corresponds precisely to the edges of the graph in both directions. If we repeat this process, but now starting with the uh, subgraphs of size two, we arrive at subgraphs of size three, and so on and so forth, until we achieve our pretended depth. Now, the main idea in Arabesque is that we treat subgraphs as our first class citizens. And because in literature, subgraphs are also called embeddings, we 
like to call our model the think like an embedding model. Uh, the other important idea with Arabesque is that there is a clear separation between what are the system and the user level responsibilities. So the system will transparently handle all the complex details of graph mining. It will do the graph exploration, do the aggregation, the load balancing, and handle automorphisms, which we'll see later on what they are. And the user simply has to implement the filter and process functions, which tell our system where to direct the exploration and what to do with the subgraphs that we find. And this is important because the core of the execution time is actually spent at the system level. And by not having to expose abstractions to these complex operations, we can make sure to implement them as efficiently as possible. So now let's look into detail at how exactly our execution model works. So in fact, it's very similar to the example that I gave you two slides ago. We split our execution into a series of exploration steps. And an exploration step simply takes embed uh, embeddings or subgraphs of size n and generates embeddings or subgraphs of size n plus 1 that are then applied to the user-defined functions. So let's look into detail here at exploration step 2. We see that we start with a set of initial embeddings of size 2, and then we take each one of these embeddings and we try to join it with an extra neighbor vertex. Each one of these connections that we can make constitutes a candidate embedding or subgraph of size 3. Now, we simply have to take each one of these candidates and pass them on to a user-defined filter function, which will tell us if the user is interested in this candidate and so we should process it further, or if we should simply discard it. Now, if the user is interested, we pass the candidate to the user-defined process function, where typically the user will simply store that embedding or subgraph to disk, or perhaps it will create an aggregated metric over these subgraphs. For instance, he might be interested in counting the number of triangles that he sees. But whatever the user decides to do, that embedding is automatically added to the output of the current exploration step, and so to the input of the following one. Now, our execution follows these exploration steps until such a time as we arrive at a, an, an empty initial set of embeddings, and this symbolizes the end of our execution. This model, although being very simple, is already able to, um, to implement and encode a, a large variety of graph mining algorithms. However, there are some algorithms that cannot make filtering decisions based uniquely on the information of a single subgraph. For instance, in the frequent subgraph mining application, uh, we, we are interested in discarding all subgraphs that whose frequency is not above a certain predefined threshold. But to calculate the frequency of a subgraph, that requires us to look first at all candidates of the same size. So to accommodate these kinds of algorithms, Arabesque supports the execution of an aggregation in parallel with the execution of an, aggregation step, of an exploration step. And so what happens is that as soon as these, this aggregation is complete and the aggregated values are ready, we can use them to filter these candidates before they are expanded in the next exploration step. So, having looked in detail at, our, the, at the execution model, let's now look at how exactly Arabesque is structured. So, Arabesque runs on top of Hadoop. And in this example, let's consider that we have a cluster with three workers. Now, each one of the workers will be executing the exact same code, corresponding to the model I've just described. And during the, execu the execution of an exploration step, each one of these workers will take as input a partition of embeddings of size n that was generated in the previous step. They will expand these embeddings of size n and pass them on to the user-defined filter functions and will generate as output embeddings of size n plus 1. You'll then notice that these outputs are shuffled throughout the entire cluster. Now, the reason why we do this shuffling is to try and reduce the effect of hotspots. Now, hotspots are caused because some embeddings, some subgraphs, are inherently more expandable than others. Consider the case of an edge connecting two high-degree vertices. This edge will necessarily generate more expansions than a similar edge connecting two low-degree vertices. But by spreading these expansions randomly throughout the cluster, we attempt to achieve some kind of load balancing. 
So now let's look at the two optimizations that I mentioned earlier, earlier on in the introduction. The first one has to do with avoiding redundant work. And what frequently happens when executing these graph mining algorithms is that during execution, we'll arrive at subgraphs that initially look different, but that when we look closely, they are actually equivalent representations of the same subgraph. And our system does not want to uh, process each one of these equivalent representations because this is redundant work and a waste of useful system resources. So let's see an example. Let's consider that worker one is currently in the process of expanding the subgraph one, two. And similarly, worker two is currently in the process of expanding the subgraph three, two. Now, let's imagine that worker one decides to expand this subgraph by connecting it with the neighbor vertex three. It will then generate the triangle one, two, three, one. If worker two then decides to expand his own embedding by connecting it to a vertex one, it will generate the triangle three, two, one, three. If you look carefully, you'll see that these are actually equivalent representations of the same triangle involving the vertices one, two, and three. And so what we want in our system is a way to tell one of these workers that he should, he should go ahead and process the subgraph that he has, while at the same time telling the other worker to not process his own version, because that would be redundant work. It's already being processed by another worker. And the, the, the way we achieve this is by using what we call decentralized embedding canonicality check. And this check is really useful because it allows us to determine which is the canonical version of the subgraph that we are looking at, and so which version is the one that we really want to process. All the other automorphisms that are not canonical constitute duplicate subgraphs that we want to discard. And because of the way that Arabesque was implemented, we were also able to implement this checking in a very efficient manner. So the high-level idea, the high-level idea is that if we then apply this check to the embedding that worker one is seeing, in this example, the check would return true, which tells worker one that yes, this is the canonical representation of the embedding that he's looking at. And so we want to go ahead and process it. At the same time, if worker two runs the exact same, same check using only local information, no coordination, the check would tell worker two that the embedding that he's looking at is an automorphism that is not the canonical one. And so worker two would simply skip this embedding. The other optimization that I'm going to talk about has to deal with how exactly we try to handle this exponential growth. So our goal is to be able to handle trillions or even quadrillions of different embeddings. But uh, using simple embedding lists, even when uh, associated with compression, uh, compression mechanisms such as LZ4 or prefix trees, soon become unmanageable. Our solution is to use a specialized data structure which we call over approximating direct acyclic graphs. And what this data structure gives us is a way to store a set of embeddings into a less restrictive superset. And in doing so, achieve significant compression factors as we shall see later on. Now, but because we are storing these embeddings into a less restrictive superset, this means that when we read from a NODAG, we will read not only the embeddings that we put there, we also read some spurious invalid embeddings that our system has to now figure out and discard. But fortunately, because of our canonicality checking code and the user-defined filter function, we can do this very efficiently. So to get an idea of how exactly ODAGs operate, let's consider this input graph here. And we can see that if we are looking at subgraphs of size three, storing all the canonical subgraphs in an embedding list would require a matrix with six rows and three columns. Now, the idea between a ODAG is that we don't want to keep information about an entire row. We simply want to keep connection information between adjacent columns. So if we look at the embedding list, we can see that whenever there's a one in column one, it's always followed by a four in column two. So in our ODAG, we would simply keep a pointer from one in column one to, one to four in column two. And by doing this for all the columns and all the entries, we arrive at a structure that looks uh, somewhat similar to what is there on the on your left. 
right. <laughs> and, 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 and we will see how, how this gives us a very good compression. So regarding the evaluation, we ran Arabesque on a cluster with 20 machines, and each one of these machines had 32 threads and a total of 256 gigabytes of RAM per machine. And we implemented three different algorithms on top of Arabesque. Frequent subgraph mining, motif counting, and click finding. And we ran each one of these algorithms with a wide variety of input graphs, from the very small, like sites here with just a few thousand vertices and edges, to the very large, like the Instagram graph containing close to 900 million edges. And these graphs also have varying degrees of density. So sites here is very sparse with an average degree of three, whereas the SN graph is one of our denser ones with an average degree of 79. So we wanted to capture a great variety of different situations. Now, the first question is, does Arabesque scale? And what we saw in our experiments is that Arabesque is indeed able to scale linearly, although the exact slope of this linear scalability depends on certain algorithm and graph-specific factors, but what this scalability allows us to do is to then see that, for example, when running click finding on the Miko graph, the state-of-the-art implementation would require 15, close to 15,000 seconds to get the correct results. And with Arabesque, using, sorry, using just 10 servers, we can achieve the exact same results in just 140 seconds, or using the entire capabilities of the cluster in just 70 seconds. And, and similarly, for other algorithms and, and graphs, for example, FSM and patents, the centralized baseline would require more than 19 hours to produce the results, and using the full capabilities of the cluster, we can produce those exact same results in just 88 seconds. So now, looking at ODAGs, um, this chart shows on the y-axis the serialized size required to store a certain set of embeddings. And we show this size for different sizes of embeddings and for two different storage mechanisms. In red, you can see the size required for storing these embeddings with simple embedding lists. And in blue, you can see the required size for storing these embeddings with ODAGs. And what we see is that once subgraphs start becoming non-trivial, so once they have, are of size three or greater, we see that ODAGs give us tremendous compression factors. If we look in particular at uh, em the embeddings of size six, we see that to store the 1.7 billion embeddings that we have at this point, we would require something close to 44 gigabytes using embedding lists. To store the exact same set of embeddings with ODAGs, we require just 60 megabytes. And this is two orders of degree reduction in terms of serialized size. But now you would expect that to achieve this kind of compression, we would have to pay a lot in terms of execution time. But what we actually saw in our experiments was that using ODEGs not only allows you to save memory, it also gives you faster execution times. In particular, in these five different experiments, we saw speedup factors of up to 4.18. And these speedups become greater the deeper you go in your exploration. Now, the explanation for this is that Yes, ODAGs give you some overhead in the sense that you have to deal with these spurious embeddings. However, these overheads are quickly eclipsed uh, uh, when we consider the savings that we get in terms of memory allocation, network communication, and especially garbage collection. Finally, typical graph mining evaluations uh, focus solely on very small graphs. And this is because of the exponential nature of the problem. But we wanted to try and push Arabesque to its limit, and so we wanted to see how well it would perform with two of our largest graphs, the SN and Instagram graphs, with respectively 200 million and 900 million edges. And what we did was run motif counting and click finding for these graphs, and what we saw was that Arabesque was able to execute these algorithms over these graphs, producing execution times that varied between the 30 minutes for click finding, and um, close to 11 hours for uh, motifs on the Instagram graph. And in these experiments, we saw more than 8.4 trillion uh, subgraphs or embeddings of interest. So 
In conclusion, graph mining is complex. We have to deal with exponential explosion of state, we have to deal with automorphisms, and existing approaches are not ideal. So what we wanted to do with Arabesque is to facilitate the development of distributed graph mining algorithms, and we achieved this by giving the user a very simple and generic API that opens the development of these algorithms to non-experts, to non and a very efficient and scalable execution engine that allows you to run your algorithms efficiently and uh, take them to a cluster. However, this is just the beginning. There are still st several challenges to overcome, but we hope that Arabesque can become an important first step towards further research in this area. In particular, based on the two previous presentations, I've already seen several ways in which we can uh, work towards bettering this system. Uh, finally, uh, we open sourced Arabesque under the Apache license, and so I invite you to check our website, arabesque.io, where you can find uh, pre-compiled jars as well as a sample starter project that will allow you to easily start uh, playing around with our system. There's also a user guide under construction to give you some more information in detail of how just to accomplish that. And with that, we reached the end of the presentation. I'll be glad to take any questions you might have.